Welcome back to our Cisco Packet Tracer course. In this tutorial, we are going to create a 3PC network using Cisco Packet Tracer. We will connect 3 PCs to a switch, assign IP addresses and verify connectivity using ping command. We will also explore how ARP or Address Resolution Protocol works, examine what happens within a switch when devices communicate and we will see how switch learns and stores MAC addresses for efficient data transfer. So let's begin begin by creating a simple network topology using three PCs and the switch. And first thing what we will do is we will add three computers or three PCs on our workspace. Click here in the bottom left corner on end devices and here click on PC. Put your cursor somewhere on screen. Add that PC there and let's do it two more times. Now let's add the switch and to add the switch also here in the bottom left corner click on network devices and select here in the second navigation or sub navigation switches and here we will add the switch we will be using this switch which is 2960 switch by using this switch we will connect all these three devices together to connect these three devices with the switch we need to use a copper straight through cable and to add cables here in the bottom left corner again click on this lightning icon and here you will see this third option which is copper straight through cable select it and now let's click on switch and here in the switch fast ethernet 01 and then drag it to the very first pc which we have added which is pc 0 and click on pc 0 and select port fast ethernet 0 actually i will add it there so it is the first pc this one pc 1 is the second and pc 2 will be the third pc and as you can see when we added this connection it is still not connected because normally when you will be in real life connecting switches they will be establishing this connection until the connection will be established and in some cases it can take from one minute to couple of minutes and as you can see now this connection has been established this course is for absolutely new beginners that's why i'm going through all these small details again grab copper straight through cable let's click on switch let's use now second port and let's connect our second pc and now let's do exactly the same again click on switch the third port and let's click on our last pc or third pc which we connected and click on their ethernet connection and here if you would want to see how it looks in real life you could click on physical you click into home city corporate and here you can see these three pcs kind of which we have just added and here is the main wiring closet if you will click into the main wiring closet you will see this switch here let's go back to the logical area and now let's assign ip addresses to all these three pcs but before we do that let's add nodes to all these three pcs so we can see what ip addresses we will be assigning to them because we will be also looking at arc tables and it will allow easier to understand which device is which here in the top navigation click here on this note and let's click this note under this very first pc which is pc0 we are not assigning ip address just yet we are just adding a note 192.168.1 and for this very first pc host part will be dot one and now while we are still in this node selection click to the right of the second pc this is pc1 in our scenario we will be giving ip address to this device 192.168.1.2 so host for this one will be 2 and now let's click to the right of this third pc ip address 192.168.1.3 and now once we have added these nodes don't click anywhere else but here in the top navigation click on the very first which is selection tool and now let's assign ip addresses to each of these devices now we can see them visually what ip addresses we will be giving them so let's click on the first pc and here in the top navigation click on desktop and click on IP configuration and this is the place where we will be assigning IP address so 192.168.1.1 and click into the subnet mask and subnet mask will be populated close down this window let's do exactly the same for second a desktop IP and IP for this one is 192.168.1.2 click into subnet mask it is populated and now let's close down this window and let's click in third one click in desktop 
click on IP configuration and let's assign IP address 192.168.1.3 and click into the subnet mask and close this window. So now we have assigned the IP addresses and we have assigned subnet mask which means that each PC now has a unique IP address within the same subnet which allows them to communicate on this network. However, so far we haven't sent any data to any of these PCs. They are just physically connected and they are on the same network but they still haven't communicated. This means that they still haven't pinged anything, they still haven't sent any files to other PC, they haven't done anything. So all these devices on this network, they still don't know about existence of other devices. For example, PC1 doesn't know that there is PC2 because it has never connected to it. And here comes in ARP or address resolution protocol which we will explore how it works. Before we test connectivity let's explore ARP address resolution protocol. But let's start by understanding what is ARP. ARP is a protocol used by devices on a local network to find the MAC or media access control addresses associated with an IP address since data is sent to a specific MAC address on a local network and ARP helps to resolve the corresponding MAC address for a given IP. So how ARP works? When a PC, let's say PC0, this one, wants to communicate with another PC, let's say PC1, which in our scenario is this one, but PC0 doesn't know the MAC address of PC1, it sends an ARP request. It sends an ARP request to the network, to all this sub-network or all this local area network, asking who has IP address 192.168.12. As we can see, this is this PC. However, PC0 will broadcast this message asking who has 192.168.1.2 to all network. And this in networking is known as ARP request. And PC1, so as PC2, will also get this request. And once the PC1 will get this ARP request, it will respond with an ARP reply that includes its MAC address. And PC0 stores this information in the ARP table for future reference on this PC0. And we can check the ARP tables before and after connectivity. So let's take a look at the ARP tables on each PC before they communicate. So on PC0, click on it. In the top navigation, go to desktop and click on command prompt. And here type ARP space dash and A and hit enter. And as you can see, there is no ARP entries found. This means that this PC0 doesn't know about any devices. However, if you would see here in this response a list of IP addresses and MAC addresses, this would mean that this PC1 previously have communicated with any other devices. And you can do exactly the same for other devices. Let's go into PC1, let's click into it, let's click into command prompt, and again type in ARP space dash A. And also no ARP entries found. And the same let's do for the third device. Click on it, desktop and click into command prompt. Again ARP space dash a enter no arp entry so these devices these all three devices are absolutely new to network they have nothing in their arp tables but now let's test connectivity which will generate arp requests and responses because we will be testing connectivity from pc0 to pc1 and to do this click on pc0 here select command prompt and ping this pc1 which ip address is 192.168.1.2 so type in ping space and ip address and hit enter and as you can see there were requests which all were replied. This means that PC0 sent an ARP request to all network. It broadcasted message. This message was received by PC1 and PC2. And PC1 checked this message and it saw that its IP is being requested. And it replied with its MAC address and with its IP address. And when PC0 got this information, it stored this information in its ARP table. And we can also check it by again typing in ARP space dash A and hit again enter. And now you can see that now in the ARP table there is internet address. As you can see it has been stored 192.168.1.2. It has been stored in the ARP table of PC0 and also physical address and this is the physical address which is MAC address for also this PC1. 
this IP address 192.168.1.2 as you can see here and it says that type is dynamic this means that this address has a time limitation that it can expire if these two devices will not be communicating for the longer time periods where there is also a static type static type means that the IP to MAC address mapping has been manually configured and do not expire or be automatically removed so as if you would want also you could remove this mapping record from this PC's ARP table and to do that write the command ARP space dash and D and hit enter and to check if this ARP table is empty again type ARP space dash and a and hit enter and now you can see that there is no arp entries found in this table so to remove it is arp dash d and to check your arp table for your pc even your home pc you are typing arp space dash and a and now again let's type a command ping and let's ping again and to not type this command you can use arrows up and arrows down on your keyboard if you didn't know that you can do it to type this again let's ping again 192.168.1.2 hit enter or oh, sorry hit enter and you can see that this request again is being sent and the request was sent and it has been replied and now again to check your ARP table type in ARP space dash A and hit enter and again that record is there so this is how ARP works I'm just trying to explain this for absolutely beginners so as if you are following my tutorials make sure that you are exercising and doing exactly the same so you are getting the real feel not only watching these videos now let's go over one more time what happens when people PC0 will send the ping to PC1 or will ping the PC1 IP address 192.168.1.2. First PC0 will check its ARP table for the MAC address of 192.168.1.2. Since it will not be there until the PC0 will ping it, PC0 will broadcast an ARP request to the network. And PC1 will respond with an ARP reply containing its MAC address which PC0 will add to its ARP table and only after the ARP exchange the ping will proceed and you should see responses in the command prompt indicating successful connectivity which we saw there and similar way you can play around with all other devices but now let's discuss how switch learns and uses MAC addresses to optimize the data flow so learning phase in switch when PC0 sends the ARP request it sends it as a broadcast and the switch receives it on the port where PC1 is connected and switch learns the MAC address of PC0 is associated with fast Ethernet 01 and to build the MAC table the switch creates table mapping MAC address to switch ports and this table is known as MAC address table or come content addressable memory table and how switch makes forwarding decisions when PC1 responds to the PC0 ARP request the switch also learns PC's one MAC address and associates it with fast Ethernet 02 where we connected it to the switch and future packets from PC0 to PC1 will be directed specifically to PC's one port reducing unnecessary broadcasting so this all is being done to not have this unnecessary broadcasting as switch knows that now PC0 is in this port and switch also knows that PC1 is also this port and whenever PC1 will want to connect to PC2 switch will switch now knows on which port these two PCs live so it will be directly directing traffic from PC0 to PC1 or from PC1 to PC2 without broadcasting because broadcasting is not necessary anymore as switch now knows that these ports are associated with these MAC addresses and as a result here you understand that switch is transferring data between connected devices based on their MAC addresses which it learns and which it stores in its MAC address table and here is how you can view the MAC address table on switch in Cisco Packet Tracer. Click on the switch, then click here at the top navigation in CLI, and this command line interface will open up. Press Enter, and once you will press Enter, you will see this switch. And here, let's type in a command: show space MAC space address dash table and hit enter and here you can see that this table is currently empty which means that this switch haven't learned any MAC addresses so let's close this click on PC0 
click on the command prompt and here again let's ping device which IP ends with 2 and hit enter. So we pinged this device, now let's, cl let's close this window, let's click on switch, let's go into CLI and on switch again. Let's type the same command show MAC address table and hit enter. And now you can see that VLAN or virtual local area network, here is the MAC address of one device and the type for this MAC address is dynamic and it has assigned it to port 1 or it knows that this MAC address device, this particular device is connected to port 1 and the device with this MAC address is connected to port 2. Two. And now if you would want to check it also with the third device, let's close this window down and now from PC0, let's ping the IP address of our third device. Let's click on PC0, let's click on command prompt, here we will ping the IP address 192.168.1.3, hit enter. As you can see pinging is happening, straight away you can check ARP, whether it added it to the ARP table, type in ARP space dash A hit enter. You can see that now in PC0, in our PC0 ARP table there are two, two IP addresses stored and there are also two MAC addresses stored for those devices and they both types are dynamic. So let's close this down, let's click on switch and again go into CLI and again type in show MAC address table and hit enter and now you can see the MAC addresses for all our three devices and you can see where are ports that these devices have been assigned to these ports. So yes guys, hope that this video helped you, now you understand what is ARP, what is MAC table, how ARP works and how Switch is creating a MAC address table and how Switch is assigning these MAC addresses to its ports. If you found this video useful, leave a like, share this video, subscribe to the channel if you are new and let's see in the next one.